Hey guys, welcome to another video with HP Tuners. Today, we're talking transmission tuning. Think of this as a one-on-one -on -one course on why you might want to consider tuning your transmission, especially if you're already tuning your vehicle's engine. This video is a very basic overview of what parameters you'd want to look at when you're tuning your transmission. Let's get into it. Okay, one of the most commonly tuned transmissions in the world is a 6L80. Lots of shutter problems with converters in the world. People complain about the shift strategy, converter lockups, things like that. Well, we're here to tell you at HP Tuners that you can make changes to that simply through our software. The simplest thing to do on it is approach it from the fact that we don't want any rumble strips, we don't want to convert a lock too early, but we don't want too much slip either. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go through some basic functions of a 6L80 transmission modification so you can see it, all right? So the first and simple thing that I like to do is actually look at the actual torque management, okay? There's only two things in torque management I may want to adjust, and that's the actually stall management on that. I may bring these up. I'll use the number 8,000 here on both of these. So that takes that, and then I'm gonna look at any upshift torque stuff. I'm gonna leave that alone for now, but I'm gonna roll into that torque converter because normally you feel that shutter with a torque converter, and this is what we're gonna get rid of. Whenever you have transmission shops having problems and they don't like the shutter going on, a customer says something's going on with it, the nine times out of 10, you can move the lock up and take care of it. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna show you the apply part of this, all right? So we don't want the converter lock up in this case, we'll say in first, second, third, or fourth in our normal mode. So the number we like to use on this, if you use it wherever you want, but it's never gonna reach it. Put in a number it's never going to reach. In this case, I'm gonna use 318 mile an hour. If it goes 318 mile an hour in first gear, you're on the way to planet Pluto, so don't have to worry about that, all right? So the next one we're gonna take is pattern A. Now, pattern A, B, and C, you can look up at what it's assigned to, whether it's your tow haul mode or whatever else. If you use this up in, in tow haul mode, you may wanna leave that one alone, because in tow haul mode, you want it to pull and load it down. In our normal modes, we're gonna come in here and say, okay, I don't want this to lock up. I'm gonna do this. So I'm actually moving the apply speeds right now. And that one's already done in, in our pattern B. Now I'm gonna go to the release. Well, in other videos, you've seen me talk about three to five down from the shift speeds, from up speeds and down speeds, and the lock up, up and downs. So in this case, 318 was the number we used. I'm gonna come in here and say, okay, I'm gonna make it 315. So that's three below it. Again, it's never gonna reach it, but we wanna make sure. Same thing here. There we go, so 315 is there. And then, so we still have lockup in fifth, and we still have lockup in sixth. So now we're saying, well, good, what are we gonna do? Well, we wanna make sure the full throttle ones are turned off as well. Same thing here, 318 and 315. Now, if you wanna just lock one to three, that's fine. A lot of people will leave fourth gear still locked up, but if you don't want it to lock up or you feel a shutter problem there, just go in and change it. So we just both of those and pattern B it obviously is already set so we don't have to worry about that. So that's done in the apply release. Now in the general part we come into something special. Before we go there I want to make sure I show you one thing. In the engine side of it we leave the fueling fuel saving. This is your active fuel management or displacement on demand. This is important in this case turn off because a lot of times that eight six to four cylinder mode will cause a shutter to be even worse. Okay. So if you want to disable it, I'm gonna show you a little trick here. We're gonna use disable, super simple function. I'm also gonna come in and say, okay, I don't want it to work unless it's over 254 degrees. So the engine should not ever get to 254 because that means it's overheating, so I can do that. I can also go in there and turn on the minimum VSS, 300, whatever else, but those two right there will actually disable it. And to disable RPM, I'll make that zero. So with that being said, it will not only not go into that mode, but on some of your early vehicles, it would come up on the dash requesting DOD mode. This case, it'll never activate, even with it disabled, okay? So that's turned off. Let's go back into the transmission on that converter. So we got slip. So our slip stuff's in here, our desired slip. If you go back and look right there at the bottom of the page, you'll see it's already at zeros here. But normal driving, there's nothing wrong. We're going here, setting this to zero, take out that slip. Now, if you want a little bit of slip, and so you can leave that in there, but I caution you because if you look at what a, like a Z06 would have with the automatic transmission, you'll notice some C6 Corvettes that they're actually zeroed out from pretty much part throttle on, all right? So that's why I kind of learned where I wanted to turn these off. Once I drive it with this, it feels great. So I'm gonna go ahead and zero these out. On a minimum slip on the AC on, I'm gonna make this a zero as well. So I wanna make sure it's there. Now, 
I don't have to modify the DODs because it's turned off already. So if you leave it on, then you can go in there and turn off the slip or modify the slip. Just be careful with that. If you notice the way our DOD is set, you can see that it's at 40, you bring it down to 20 or 10 or even zero and see how you like it. If you want to keep your active fuel management displacement on demand activated, okay? Now don't forget the pressures. We might want to take our line pressure here. We don't want to go too crazy, but if you just do a little bit of percentage, and I like the 140 number, so I'm going to add 40 to this, or make it 140. And if I come down to here, I'm going to say I'm just going to add to this right here, I'm going to add 35. So you notice it gives 35 to our base pressure of 140 and also drops it off at the top so we have any problems there. All right. So quick pressure settings right there that you can do. Um, your max pressure is obviously they're really high, so you don't have to worry about that. Another very important thing to remember is when you're tuning the transmission, you want to make sure that the transmission speed is calculated correctly. In other words, if they put bigger tires on it or smaller tires, it's going to change the shift schedule, all right? So you need to make sure that's done. We've done it in previous videos. I went ahead and brought it up on here anyway, using the wizard. It's got a 34 inch tall tire. We'll put the number in here, same gear ratio. Just to reiterate this, I put that in there. It automatically is gonna change my transmission shifts and it's gonna be correct. So when I write it back, now my transmission is shifting correctly based on the correct mile an hour on your speedometer as well. Okay, so don't forget that little tidbit, that definitely helps on drivability. One other thing you can do this is if you wanna shift a little firmer, uh, a little quicker, you wanna do some of the shift timing. I recommend about 20%. So what you can do in your normal mode and your special mode is come in here and just take this file and just say, okay, I'm gonna take and reduce it by 20%. We do that by doing 0 0.80. So 0 0.80 times that number and that drops it down. So you get a little quicker shift out of it. You do that for first to second, second to third, third to fourth, and you can do fourth to fifth. I don't normally shorten my fifth to sixth or, or, or anything after that on the later model transmissions. I like them to go into normal mode and comfortable at that point, but when I'm driving around, I like the crisp shift. I like a little firmer. So this is what we can do right here. So do the point eight. Obviously I would do these to each one of these. I'll just show you my sequence here. So we have those and I would do it in special mode as well. And you can see the numbers changing on there when you bring them up. So I would do those as well. Now, with all those things you just did, when you drive the vehicle, what you wanna do is you wanna drive it and log it, see how the converter feels, see how the drivability is. If it shifts too early or shifts too late, feel free to go in and modify that. Look at the mile an hour you're shifting at, you log the mile an hour, you log the lockup point, you can see where it shifts, uh, shifts at, you ask where you're commanding it. If it's uncomfortable to you, then it's probably uncomfortable to the person that's driving it. So feel free to modify that according to what you want it to do for your upshifts and downshifts. Super simple, transmission 6L80, improvements 101. Disclaimer, after flashing a 6L8090 transmission, you may need to reset the transmission adaptives in VCM scanner under the special functions. Reset the adaptives from top to bottom. Thanks for tuning into the basic overview of transmission tuning using the GM 6L80 transmission. Let us know in the comments what areas of transmission tuning you would like to have covered in a more in-depth lesson. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.